All right, why don't we go ahead and get started. Um, so again, welcome everyone to today's Entrepreneur Workshop. I'm very excited about today's topic, uh, which we'll introduce in just a minute. But um, first things first, wanted to do a quick virtual icebreaker. So uh, for all of you that are on and also logging on right now, um, if you could just take the next, um, let's say 90 seconds to participate in a virtual icebreaker, this is our way to get to know um, each other uh, at least in a virtual spot. And um, if you could put in your name, your business name, um, name your business if you already started it, or if you're from an organization today, um, the name of your organization, your role there, or if you've um, planned on starting a business, but you haven't yet um, started it, what type of business do you plan on starting? And um, if you already have any social media, um, feel free to put in your social media handles or websites. Um, that you might have. So let's take the next um, minute to go ahead and put that information in. All right, thank you again for those who had a chance to put in your information and participate in our virtual icebreaker. Um, let's go ahead and, and get started. So quick off, uh, before we start, I want to do a, a quick introduction as to who we are and what we do. Um, some of you may be familiar with CLO. I do, I do see a lot of uh, familiar faces, but I see just as many new faces. So in terms of who we are, um, CLO stands for Community for Innovation, Entrepreneurship, Leadership, and Opportunities. We officially launched in 2015, but we've been helping clients since 2012. We're a nonprofit organization helping aspiring business owners become, uh, helping aspiring entrepreneurs become business owners. We help you build and develop the entrepreneur mindset needed to help you achieve success. And we provide the resources and guidance and you provide the hard work and the passion. So being that we're a nonprofit, all of our services are available at no cost for our clients. So we don't charge for any of our programming. In terms of services that we offer here at CLO, we do have a small business development training program that we do offer um, multiple times throughout the year, four to five times throughout the year. We do have a monthly entrepreneur workshop series, just like this one that we're doing today. Each month is a different topic and a different guest speaker. We also offer one-on-one -on -one small business coaching. Um, we do have a client navigation support to help uh, up to business launch for all of our clients who are actually enrolled in our, pro in our programming. Uh, we do have a, a client navigation aspect to it where we actually help support you up to business launch and even afterwards as well too. Um, we do offer a micro grant program for CLO small business startups. So for all of our clients that go through our programming and complete our small business startup program, 100% um, in completion, you may be eligible for a micro grant um, to help with startup funds. And we also try to, um, we also want to be a connection for small business resources and services. And it's ironic that we actually say that because one of our greatest partners, uh, one of our um, close partners is here today presenting Jessica. So <clears throat> in terms of upcoming events, we're currently in a small business startup program right now. Our next one will be uh, February 27th. So oops, I put the wrong date, February 27th, 2024. So looking at next year. So in terms of what this looks like, take a journey on the Entrepreneur Roadmap to Business Launch. This is a six-week training program for entrepreneurs and startups. It includes three weeks of live classroom training and three one-on-one -on -one business coaching sessions with both myself or with our business coach, um, Eric Pineda. Um, topics include how to pick a business name, advertising on social media, introduction of business financials, and much, much more. So if you're interested in attending, uh, we don't have a registration up yet, but please email us at info at clcommunity.org. Or visit our website, join our um, newsletter mailing list, and you will be informed as to when our next session will be coming up. So in terms of workshop reminders, I uh, just want to let you all know that we will be setting a recap um, by the end of the week. And on this recap, this recap goes to everyone who's actually registered for this um, workshop today. Uh, we will have a recording of this actual Zoom session. So um, don't feel like you have to take very, um, you know, strenuous notes. We will be providing a recording of this workshop uh, for those who attended today and even those who weren't able to attend. Um, any presentation deck um, available, uh, if we're able to sh share it, we'll also include that on the email. 
along with today's guest speaker contact information. And we always want to make sure we leave some time at the end for Q&A. So any questions you might have, uh, feel free to drop in the chat. But also, we will save some time at the end for some questions and answers for today's guest speaker. So today's topic is visual merchandising um, by our friend and partner, Jessica Anguiano from Small Business Majority. This is definitely a very popular topic. We did get a lot of interest in terms of this workshop. Um, it's a topic that um, I'm not too familiar with. Um, so I'm so happy to have Jessica here to uh, share her expertise. So Jessica, I'll go ahead and pass the, the floor on to you. Hi, thank you, Alex, so much for uh, that great introduction. And hello, everyone. Thank you for making time to join us today. Um, I'm so excited to be able to present this topic to you guys. I feel like this topic is not talked about enough, and there's really not much information. So this is one of the reasons why I'm super excited uh, to be able to present this to you. And I was just telling Alex that after this presentation, you may not shop the same again, because I am going to be telling you everything that goes behind the scenes with big chain stores like Target, Walmart, and any big store that you think of. Um, just to kind of give you a uh, while I share my screen here, uh, just to give you a quick overview of my background in visual merchandising, I was the lead for uh, both Forever 21 and Target. So I launched a lot, I launched a lot of new brands such as Heart in Hand, and I designed the floor layouts for uh, Forever 21. Um, so again, I'm excited to share everything I know um, when it comes to visual merchandising. And just so you know, visual merchandising is actually a series. So I did my best to compress all the information that um, I could in this one presentation. But like Alex said, this uh, presentation will be available to you. So I won't be getting so deep in the details. Um, it will be more for you to review. Um, once again, my name is Jessica Anguiano, and I'm also one with the longest title ever. My name is... My title is Southern California Senior Outreach Manager, and I am also the Minority Entrepreneurship Programs Manager. What that means is whenever I find a need for our small business owners, I design programs that could potentially support you. Uh, okay, so I am here with Small Business Majority. And for those that don't know Small Business Majority, uh, we have four focus areas. There is the research. We have a department that fully focuses on research by doing polling, focus groups, and um, just basically gouging small business owners' views to speak um, their point of view. Um, then we do advocacy based on that research and based on what we're hearing from you guys. We advocate for you on the state and local level. Um, there is opportunities for you to become a spokesperson if you are interested. Uh, we will train you. And just like Cielo, all of our services are at no cost to you. Um, we do network. We do education. So education such as this one. Um, I do this on my own. And I also partner with great partners like Cielo. So in this presentation, um, I'm going to cover understanding consumer behavior, under ten, understanding your target market, and I will go very briefly on those. Um, and I just thought it was very important for you to understand why understanding this is important when it comes to designing your tables at pop-up events. And so the question is, why do we buy what we buy? Some purchases are obvious, right? If you need milk, if you need eggs, you need food to consume. And a lot of the times um, there's maybe not so much. Um, well, I think things are changing now, but there's really not that com that much comparison, whether if you were buying a car. So there are times where consumers are taking the time to decide between two items or two different brands. <laughs> do, do I go to Walmart or do I go to Target? It's essential for business owners to understand what drives their customers to purchase or not purchase a product. Um, when I used to work at Target, I used to run reports all the time. And if I was looking at one specific blouse, I would even ask myself, hmm, why is it that the pink blouse is selling a lot more than the white one? 
And it could mean a lot of things. It could mean that the white one um, is out of season, or it could be that the the stock team the stock team never took out those clothing or that top back from the back room. So again, what is consumer behavior? Consumer behavior involves the study of how individuals, groups, or organizations select, decided, influence to purchase a product or service. Consumer behavior combines insights from economic, psychology, psycholo psychology, sociology, anthropology, and neuroscience. Consumer behavior is influenced by a variety of factors, both personal and external. So just to kind of go a little bit about the psychology part, um, it is said that a lot of us think to the, with our right side of the brain more than our left side of the brain. So a lot of the times, if you envision yourself going into the store, ask your question. I, I'm going to ask you a question and, and answer uh, in the chat box if you like. Let's say you're going inside a Target. Are you going left or are you going right? And I'm going to, let's see, can I see those answers? Uh, if you want to just type an R or an L or an yes, right, left. Oh, okay. Couple more, couple more answers. Do you go to the right or do you go to the left? Yes. So if uh, there are some people that go to the left, um, and yes, Sherry Damon also put it depends, and that is correct, Sherry. It is. It depends how the store is laid out. Sometimes they will put aisles where they'll make you go to the right. Um, for Target in particular, back then, I'm talking about a few years ago, I haven't been there for a while, but the two top selling department were the cosmetic departments and the clothing for women's department. So if you think about it right now, uh, well, back then, um, and it still might be the same, um, those were the two departments that were either to the right or to the left. Now, the highest department that used to make the most sales was actually to the left. And as you can see, a lot of you guys are going to the right. And that means that you're going to have to go through the whole store to finally get to what you want. The same thing for your for those ladies that go to Target for a quotation mark, that gallon of milk is at the very back. It's not at the beginning because they know that for, for most part, you're going to go through all these aisles. So again, thank you for participating on that. Some of the factors influencing consumer behaviors is personal. Um, that comes with age, income, personality, lifestyles, values. So that means that a younger college kid or even a high school kid will have a lower budget car versus someone that's already stable and is well off, having more of a luxury car. So there is psychological, motivational perception. There's learning and attitudes and also social Social is, uh, it means family, friends, influencers, culture, social class. This is where the whole TikTok made me do it. So I'm going to start skimming a little bit faster to this to get to the good stuff, when, which is the visual merchandising, but just wanted it to know that also what what influences uh, your shopping is uh, the, gen the different generations, right? Baby boomers, Generation X, Millennials, Generation C, and Alpha. Alpha, for those that are not familiar with Alpha, is any, um, depending on where you look for this information, but usually it's those below 12 years old. Now, let me just give you guys a quick story on this. So when I used to work at Target, I used to come, you know, I used to have a baby boomer and they would ask me, where are your toasters at? And I would tell them, go straight to the right. And they'll give me this face like, are you not going to walk me there? So I already knew that I had to treat my baby boomers a little bit different. So usually when they would come, I would walk them down to the aisle. Then I would have my generation C where they would be like, where do you have this specific item? And I would um, I would tell them and I'll say, I'd be happy to walk you. They're like, oh, no, I already know. Um, so they, they had already done their research. So that's why you want to make sure that you also understand who your target market is, because it's going to influence the way they shop. Here's a little fun fact. If you have not heard of this before. Um, you have the influence of uh, the power to influence consumer behavior. 
And Captain Crunch cereal companies like Captain Crunch, Lucky Charms, and other cereals are using this tactic where they change the little eyeballs of the, you see the Captain eyeballs are looking down. And usually you're going to see that a lot of the sugar cereals or, or the ones that are aiming towards kids are in the middle aisle because you're pushing your little kid in the car. And this Captain Crunch is making contact with your little kid. Um, a lot of the cereals are strategically positioned at lower shelves or at taller shelves when it's cereals targeting adults. I know, I'm telling you, marketing is a little scary sometimes. Um, so sense it to connect with the memory. I highly encourage you that when you are um, setting up your boots, that you're keeping the senses in mind. Touch, see, hear, smell, taste. Our senses are very powerful and it triggers uh, memories and emotions. How many times have you not smelled something or tasted something and said, hmm, that reminds me of when dot, dot, dot. So make sure that you're uh, finding a way to implement these senses uh, to your your displays when, you, um, when you're setting up. Um, again, I'm not going to go into details, but just to give you an example, taste. The, when I think about taste, I think about Costco. Every time I go to Costco is for one thing and I end up walking out with so many other things with a bill over $100 that I did not expect to uh to spend and that was because and that is because they always get me with the with the samples they're always giving me something to try and in uh they're just really good at this so i think that they take the crown when it comes to um capturing their their customers uh, when it comes to taste the smell the one that i can think about is uh dave and busters they have like this cotton candy smell um, so that just kind of gives you an idea. There are stores that are actually specifically uh, spraying a specific aroma just so they can have that that connected to your memory. Uh, one other one that I would like to share is um, I couldn't find the link to share with you, but I know that in my studies with uh, visual merchandising, they used how uh, North Face was using temperature as the, a way to connect with sensory. Why? Because uh, you know that here in California, it this is probably the coldest it's ever gotten before. But in during the summers, it gets really hot. And how are they supposed to sell jackets and sweaters? So they will crank up the AC to a very low temperature so you could be cold and just get that sense of having that jacket. Now that we cover that, um, I think that you have a better idea who your uh, your persona is. Um, if you don't know who your persona is, I highly encourage you to work on this. Get a photo, give them demographics, give them a professional status, give them information sources. How do they shop so it could help you set up your booth? <clears throat> so here is an example. If you, oops, sorry. If you are selling dry fruits, right? That is your stand. But your target market is health conscious consumers. Your setup is going to be completely different from a gourmet uh, in the US that is buying um, fruits. So for this kind of business, I would encourage to put a fresh and natural uh, setting by using rustic wooden crates or basket as display fixtures. I would talk about, um, I would have little signs about talking about the advantages of nutritional advantage, having higher fiber, content, vitamins, all that information is important for you to have at your booth when it comes to targeting the health conscious consumers. Um, you want to use clear packaging to showcase a portion size scene saying, look, this is literally what you're consuming. Just grab and go. So if we are 
oops, I went one too far. So if we are selling dry fruits more to the gourmet and culinary folks, the presentation is going to be a lot more artistic. You're going to try to use tear displays, glass jars, uh, just to kind of give it that elegant and visually stunning presentation. You may want to provide recipe cards on how you can pair some of those fruits with other gourmet ideas. Um, as far as like your sensories, you would want to try maybe doing uh, dry fruits paired with, I don't know, maybe you want to have cheese or chocolate or wines so they could see how that can complement your, those fruits that you're purchasing is going to complement the other areas. So now this is the fun part, right? What is visual merchandising? This is what you guys came in for. So visual merchandising is the element of marketing. It is also known as silent selling. Again, remember, you're going to Target for the gallon of milk. You end up walking out with everything but that gallon of milk. That is silent selling. Some visual merchandiser was behind all of that. And one of the other things that um, when I was a visual merchandiser, one of the things that would irk me, because obviously people didn't know the science and the psychology behind everything, right? People would say, oh, you're the one who makes things look pretty. No, it's more than making things look pretty. There's a whole strategy behind your setup. And I want you to tell yourself that if you are going to pop up events, when you are setting up your table is not to make it look pretty. It's with a purpose. It is with a strategy. So one of the things that I love about visual merchandising or in-person shopping is that they're getting a sensory experience, experience meaning that that it's allowing customers to touch, feel, smell, and like I said, taste. They get that immediate gratification of buying the item right there and then. And of course, with your personal personalized assistance. So what do I mean by implementing a sensory display? I want you to keep in mind that sensory displays do not have to cost you a lot of money. Think about engaging one or five senses and your sensory display does not have to be tangible. Sometimes a, a certain jingle will remind people that that is you. Uh, some examples that I can give you is um, uh, one of my one of the small business owners that I was working with. She was working with lotions and in um, chapsticks, and she noticed that chapsticks were selling really high for her, specifically with the younger generation. So she created a little box and she put glitter on. Um, she she put glitter on the box and put the chapsticks on top. So that was her way of interacting with um, her customers. I like to say that when customers stop and interact with your display, your mission is accomplished. It is an invitation for them to stop, touch, feel, smell, and for you to let them know your benefits of your business. So I... Again, this is a whole presentation that I put together, and this was one of my icebreakers. Um, so I'm just going to go over it really quick with you. These are literally clip arts that I picked up from this um, PowerPoint presentation. In the chat box really quickly, can you guys tell me what is wrong with this layout, aside from it being black and white? If you, uh, while you're doing that, I'm going to give you a quick scenario. You are, you're, you landed a last minute interview. You don't have anything to wear and you're running a Target really quick. And this is on, or you're running an ABC fashion really quick to the wall to grab an outfit. So some of the responses in here is it's not in order and it's not organized. That is correct. So even though it looks nice and tidy, it doesn't make it doesn't make sense. Remember, your table should set up the way that your brain functions. When you're dressing, you do not put your shoes on first, then your dress, and then a skirt. Or you don't grab, you don't put on your shoes and put your purse on and then the skirt and then the shirt. So I use the same items that are on here and voila, 
I fixed it. So I gave it a better way that uh, you can envision yourself wearing if you needed to pick up an outfit really quick. So again, let's ignore the whole black and white because that's all I had to work with. But this is where your sketching comes in. I will get into that in a little bit, a little bit later. Um, you're sketching, you're not going to put the buttons and the sewing, you're literally going to put top, 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 bottom, bottom, or you could if you could draw because I can't draw, I do not know how my team used to understand my sketches. But um, this is just an idea of, of how the brain works and how you should display things. Again, it's the same items. I just move things around. And one of the things that I want to encourage you is that when you are sketching, that you give yourself that TikTok, not TikTok, I'm sorry, a tick, TikTok. Oh my God, I don't even know. Um, you know that TikTok game <laughs> or hashtag. How about let's go with hashtag. Make the little hashtag. Do you mean TED Talk? No, uh, the little number sign. I'm talking it uh, the little number sign or the little hashtag symbol. Tic tac toe. Yes, tic tac toe. Thank you. Tic tac is getting in my brain too much. Thank you. Um, always draw those lines for yourself. Um, and and let that help you um separate things or uh, separate your items. So if you can see, it's the same thing. I literally just did a little the 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 lines. And uh, is this recording going to be made available to you guys? Yes, uh, this recording will be available as well, as well as the PowerPoint. So some of the visual merchandising uh, keywords or topics are all of all of this analyzing um, inventory, planograms, windows, in-store display, interactly, interactive sensory displays, table shelving. Um, all of these words are involved with visual merchandising. Um, one of the ones that are very popular are planograms. So if you are thinking to launch your product over to Walmart or Target or one of those big chain stores, planogram is going to be a keyword for you. Um, oh, I'll, I'll talk to you guys about what planogram means, but I would encourage you that when you are looking at your pro um, before setting up, look at your product. What is it? What is your inventory? A lot of the stores usually get get rid of old stuff, right? They have a new season. In fact, they're setting up months prior to whatever the season is. But obviously, as a small business, you don't have that luxury. So I would encourage you to take inventory to see what is it that you have that you could expand onto your next season or how you could mix it with your old inventory. So for example, if you are a clothing company and you bought red dresses for Christmas and they just didn't sell, guess what? Now you can utilize those red dresses over for Valentine's. Another thing about inventory is that it will allow you to have a better idea of what you, what you have to work with and it can avoid overstock. It could even also encourage you that I've had this small business owner as an example that I used earlier with the lotions. She tried so many setups, she changed the price and it was just not selling for her. So at that point, she's like, I am done with this product and she donated it. Um, layouts are very important. I know that when you think about pop-ups, you're like, oh, I can only use a table or I can only use three tables. Make sure that when you are doing your layouts that you're thinking about what is it that you want them to shop first? Is it basics? Is it trending items? Is it essentials? Also, uh, really big on uh, department stores. Um, it prevents shoplifting. So if you have poor layouts, there's going to be times where you're going to have a blind spots where you're not going to be able to keep an eye on and um, people can shoplift. Uh, product placement, be mindful of the product placement too. Um, I like to say that every shelf and square footage to use every shelf and square footage as possible because you're paying rent. You're you're you you are paying rent for every little piece of that section that you get. Um, 
storytelling make sure that a lot of the times when you every time that you are setting up your um your displays that you have some type of aesthetic not only does it create a mood but it also creates your customers to envision the product based kind of like how i gave you that scenario about going into an interview right it it kind of you know, it kind of gives you that idea like okay i could wear this dress and shoes for the interview or i already have the top i'm just going to um get those bottoms so create a story how customers navigate through those purchases um Again, examples, creating outfits from head to toes, uh, laying out products and tools for routines. So if you are selling spices, if you are selling um, other ingredients, what can you use to help your customer make their life easier? Some of those extras. Um, grouping and symmetry are very, very important the rule of three, this goes back to psychology again, right? Our brains are wired to remember things in patterns of three. It catches customers' attention, gives customers a nice balance and options to choose from without overwhelming them. Mix your old inventory with your new inventory and that just gives you a fresh inventory. How can you do the rule of three? You can do this with mannequins, you can do this with racks, you can do this with product displays, package bundles, and that example that I gave you guys about um, drawing those three lines for yourself. Uh, not going to get into much in detail on this one, but call to action sell signage is very important as well. Do you have any sales that you want to convey to your small business owner? I'm sorry, to your customers? Um Again, going back to the two stores that I work for had a department specifically for signage. They went every week to every rack to change the signs because it just gives you that urge of like, oh, my God, I'm going to lose that. So although, you know, this week is buy one, get one free. And then next week is everything 50%. It's the same cell, to be honest. But, you know, just changing the, the verbiage and just giving that urgency to your customers. Um, here's a tip that I would like to share. Having items by the cash register, if you, um, if you can, is highly encouraged. I used to do this a lot with... Uh, uh, when I worked at Nordstrom, when I worked at Nordstrom, the, we were commission based and I worked in the sleepwear department. So during the holidays, you know, a lot of people purchase pajamas, but at the cash register, I would have fuzzy socks and I would let them know like, hey, would you like to pair uh, your fuzzy socks with these pajamas? Um, and it was easy. Yes, because I was like, OK, yeah, that would be a nice pair. And you'll see that, that that's very common when you go to these stores. They're always making extra little suggestions, um, placing small, low cost items. Um, oh, here's another trick or secret I would like to share with you guys. And one of the department stores, uh, the cash register area was making up 30% of our sales. So this is why when you go to TJ Maxx, when you go to Ross or even like Stater Brothers or whatever grocery stores are around you, you're going to see that you're like, going into this little snake aisle and there's all these little things that you end up picking up and putting in your cart that you didn't think of getting. So just an example that I have here in particular is if you're a guitar store, right? Having guitar picks near the cash register might be helpful. Colors play a huge uh, role as well. Um, because colors also create some type of emotion. So warmer colors like red, orange, and yellow tend to create a sense of energy, excitement, and urgency. And cool colors like blue, green, and purple often invoke calmness, relaxation, and trust. So this is why when uh, we go to McDonald's, uh, we see those bright colors. It's like they want you to go in and they want you to go out. But when it comes to like, uh, I don't know, Olive Garden, that it, there's a lot of greens, they want you to wine and dine as much as you can. So lighting is 
uh, another thing to keep in mind, uh, highlighting products, a lot of uh, the stores use lights to point at specific products um, because it draws attention to particular um, whatever you're trying to highlight. It also creates an ambience. Um, and again, like if you're if you are doing these pop up events, when you have that these little Christmas lights hanging from your displays, it draws attention and it makes customers want to go to that particular area. OK, so sketching, sketching your visual merchandising uh, is honestly uh, for me, the most exciting part, because I already I already took inventory, I already know what I'm going to highlight, and I already have an idea of what, where I'm going to be selling and how much square footage I have. So the again, the purpose of sketching is to help you visualize ideas, don't get details, don't get little buttons in there, don't get a little whatever is not needed. It doesn't need to elaborate, just kind of have an idea. Even if you have to go to the point where you're putting candle, candle, book, book. Uh, sketching your displays is more of a creative process and it's requiring you to experiment and think outside the box. But I will tell you that even myself being in this environment for so long, I never fully had a, a vision go 100% because um, there is a lot of factors, you know, you might, you might thought of having lighting, but the place that you have that you're going to be uh, doing a pop up event don't have electricity, or there's a lot of different even when it came to corporate, I worked at Target and Target would send me what they call uh, an adjacency book and said, have this layout look like this. I want this table to be here. And I would call corporate and be like, um, I wish I could help you, but there's a big pull in the middle of this aisle. I cannot put this table exactly where you want it. So even coming from the experts, um, it never goes exactly how you plan it. And it's okay. Again, it's just to kind of break the ice for yourself. Um, things to consider when you are sketching. Define your objective. What are you aiming to promote? Is it a specific product? Is it uh, you're trying to do more of an ambience? Um, try to gather all the inspiration that you can. Um, I, For me in particular, uh, outside these retail stores, when I did design, oh, I forgot to mention this. I actually used to be a consultant in this area as well. So when I used to design um, these floor layouts for some of my private customers, um, I would do, I would have them give me a mood board. What are you, what vibe are you going for? So it gave me a better idea on how to set up. Outline the space. One tip that I, um, that I actually learned um, through one of my uh, partners is um, ask, is there, if, if you are going to require lighting, do they have outlets? Um, can they use tent? Ask all these questions. What fixtures can you use or not use? Because they're going to be a big factor when it comes to, you know, what you already have planned. Identify focal points. Um, I'm going to touch a little bit on that right now. Create a flow, arrange props and products, consider signage and graphics. Again, this presentation will be sent out to you. Um, planogram. So here is a quick overview of what a planogram is. And I thought it was important for me to talk about it because I know that some of you guys are um, aiming to, to be at big retail stores. So planogram is basically when a store or even yourself give you a shelf layout, a shelf layout or a little space and they tell you um, where the product placement um, is. It gives you space allocation and, and also sometimes there is cross-selling and uh, planograms are also important because they come with numbers and it helps them um, uh, maintain their inventory. And I'll give you an example here. A lot of uh, like Coca-Cola, a lot of cereals, any private uh, company that sell in big retail chains use this all the time. So shelf number one, um, it will tell you that there is two facings. So cereal brand A, there's two facings, one, two. I don't know if you guys can see my little arrow. Uh, cereal brand B, 
B, there's three facing. So you'll see that next to that, there is three blue boxes. Serial brand C, there's two facings. And then shelf two and shelf three. The planogram specifies a number of facings for each serial brand on each shelf. It indicates the order of placement from top to bottom. So this might be something important to consider later um, if you uh, uh, decide to go to big uh, chain stores. So again, we I already went over the wall display example, um, set it up in a way that your brain functions. How do you dress in the morning if you do have clothing? Um, you want to be able to put your top, bottom, and shoes. Looking at this table from the bird's eye point of view, you see that I did uh, my little hashtag because I already forgot how to mention it again. <laughs> so here's my little hashtag. And as you guys can see, if we're looking at it from the top, from the point of a bird's eye point of view, I had set up my table. Uh, I separated three. Actually, um, Forever 21 does this where they actually put, uh, what do they call it? They call it, um, uh, they call it a uh, commodity. Commodity is when it's like more than one of the same item. And then they have lifestyle and, um, uh, a mixture of both commodity and lifestyle. So you're going to see that commodity are my flowers up here. Um, and then lifestyle is pretty much the middle. So here's my props. I have a little, this is a stationary store, by the way. So I have my little uh, typewriter, my coffee, a little bag. Um, and then my sensory display is actually allowing my customers to try the pens. Um, so here is a way that that you can set up your table. And then a lot of people will say, well, how can, uh, what do you mean? Like, how do I set this up? That's where your shelves come in place. This is where your crates come in place. Um, I'll give you more examples. So even tables for my services, you could make your tables fun. If you don't have anything to sell, or maybe you do, um, your sensory displays can be the spin me for a free price. Remember, your sensory displays has to be that one thing that makes your customers stop so you can now interact with them. So the example here that I use is having a podcast, right? I'm not really selling anything. What I want is for people to listen to the podcast. So uh, from the spinning, I have prices. I might have some magazines that have my face on it. I don't know. Maybe I have shirts, uh, merchandise that have the name of my podcast. Uh, but it's pretty much just something uh, where I can have the person spin, right? Spin me for a prize. And this is where I could be like, have you listened to this podcast before? Or do you listen to podcasts? Well, let me introduce you to my podcast. I talk about this and that. So that is a way that you can have a table for services. Um, even if you're selling a, a pin, right? Your sensory display could be pin this shirt. So you can give the customer an example of how cool your pins are when um, when they're use, utilizing them. Uh, props. Props are very uh, highly encouraged. As you can see in one of my previous slides, I put a typewriter. I wasn't selling a typewriter for that business. It was just more to kind of give it that lifestyle, grabbing attention and demonstrating to customers that they have the ability to envision themselves wearing that item or, you know, laying on a bed, having that bed in their house. Here are the fixtures. So here is uh, the example that I was trying to give you guys on separating, uh, you know, doing the little hashtag. Um, you can have fixtures. Any I've had customer or I had small business owners use baskets. People have used boxes. People have used uh, crates. There's all kinds of things. So here's an example of what the power of a fixture. Let's use a box as an example. You can use that box and put the flowers inside. You can close the box and put the flowers on top. You can put the box to the side and put the flowers next to it. It, it is magical on what you can do with fixtures. So I highly encourage you to invest in some fixtures if you can, because it will give you guys that um, that that overcrowding and, and just give you balance. How about you get up and actually do it yourself? 
Here's the focal points. A focal point uh, is when you, what is it that you want your customers to see first and you guide them through that vision, right? So if I'm a baker, a bakery, I'm going to go ahead and put a big cake at the very, at, you know, in the middle and then kind of put the smaller things on the side. My cupcakes are really not stealing away from my cake. And that just also gives, uh, the way that I set up the cupcakes is giving you that triangle so that's when I mean focal point every time that you set up something it has to look uh sort of like a pyramid or a triangle rules of threes again um here you go uh even even when it comes to like the table here's my pyramid looking at it from the signage going down to the candles um so again, mix your own, I'm kind of repeating myself here in mixing your old inventory with fresh inventory so you don't lose out with anything else. Uh, your floor layout also uh, allows you to cross sell. And here's, uh, I, again, I did this from scratch. This, this is, uh, uh, I used, uh, uh, what do you call them? Um, images from PowerPoint. If you are going to have a little space, you see that I add this, the, the main big table is the, the table that you usually use at pop-up events, right? Why not add a, a smaller table below it and then put more items at the bottom of that table? Remember, you're paying rent for this little area. Use as much space as possible by using um, uh, different items that will allow you to elevate your items. Here's another example that I did. Also, um, I had a small business owner that contacted me and I loved his question. He asked, he showed me the map and he's like, where in this map should I rent a space? And that was a great question because you also remember consumer behavior. Uh, you know, when people are going to flea markets or they're going to pop-up events, they're usually not going with an intention of going to go buy milk or, you know, they're going more for the adventure. So do you want them at the beginning when they are like, mm, let me keep looking to see what I like? Or do you want to be at the very end when, for example, me, I probably already spent all of my money. So even though I think you're very awesome, um, I don't have that cash anymore because I gave myself a budget. So they be mindful of where you're at and where your customers are actually, where is the traffic coming from? So what I did is I added a mirror. Why? Because people love looking at themselves, right? So I know that the mirror is probably going to stop individuals and in going into my clothing department. I also added a mannequin with maybe some type of sensory, maybe it's a sequence or something that customers are going to be able to touch. And I am influencing the way that they're walking, now, cash registers, uh, as you can see, is at the very end because at this end, I, uh, again, when you go to big department stores, after you walk the whole store, then you hit your cash registers. Um, at the for smaller little uh, businesses, cash registers can indicate like, oh, I'm looking at you. I'm looking at everything that you're doing. So kind of just give out that flow of, of letting your customers shop. And then as you can see to the very top left side, I have my purse and hats. Those are my impulse uh, items. So that's what I mean, like by having those little small business, like now that they have that outfit together, oh, that hat will look perfect with that outfit that I just got. So it has those, those last minute impulse items at the end. And that's pretty much it. Um, for for this presentation, I do want to encourage you that you sign up for our newsletter. We have an, a, a website called Venturize.org. If you type in your zip code, I love this tool because it will pull up different resources and different organizations that can support you. So for example, if you're looking for TA support and you never knew about Cielo and you're in Orange County, that will come up. Um, again, this was a compressed presentation. I do have a series of four presentations that goes more in detail. I want to encourage you to sign up to our newsletter um, to be part of this presentation. I don't know if it will go the same way, but 
Um, the one that we offered not long ago was a great success. And we actually had two winners um, that won cash prices. Um, and that's pretty much it, Alex. Thank you, Jessica. Um, this was amazing. Um, well, once again, thank you for being here. Um, Jessica, you covered a ton of ground. Um, and I hope everyone here found this session valuable. I myself did. I learned so much today. Um, but yeah, now I want to open up the floor for any final questions or thoughts. Um, feel free to unmute yourself or use the chat. I believe there is already a question in the chat. Um, okay. I do you do you, Jessica, do you prefer for me to read it off for you? Um, yes, please. Awesome. So Kalia mentioned um that she has a meal prep business. Um, and as she's going to different events. She wants to see how she can better promote her products um, for people that have never heard about her business. So any feedback on that? Um, what if she, uh, Kalia, if you don't mind, or even in the chat area, like what is it, uh, what makes you different from all these other meal prep businesses? So hi, Jessica, thanks for a great presentation. And Eric, thanks for reading my question. <laughs> Um, so one of the things that makes us different is that we cater um, to each and every one of our clients one on one. And so like if they're a person who wants to lose weight um, or if they're diabetics, all of our sweet treats, which is what I typically bring at our events, are all diabetic um, friendly uh, for people who are looking to like lose weight and um, not really a big fan of carbs and everything. Um, a lot of our sweet treats also have uh, little to no um, fl uh, flour, and we don't use um, sugar in any of our uh, desserts. Oh, okay, perfect. So I think that one of, uh, I think sensory displays are going to be very important for you because that's going to be a way to um, to stop them. And it's usually the the shock that I like the most, right? So the way that I want to think about is, um, if you want to give an example, and I'm just going to throw a random thing, right? Um, let's say your competitor is selling a jar of peach, right? How much sugar does it have? Actually bring the sugar with you and show them how much sugar it has, right? And yours, how much sugar does it have? Yeah, nothing, 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 nothing. So you can have an empty container, uh, a glass jar with no sugar, and you can have one with your competitor and show how much sugar their uh, their item has. So that would be your sensory display. And that could all it, sensory displays to me are uh, icebreakers. I hope that helped. Thank you so much. It does. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Kalia. And one more question from Gabriela. She has a business. Um, they create... Um, a bear from special clothes, um, from honoring someone. And so she's asking, what advice would you give on personalized items? How can you really um, create a visual uh, representation behind that? Yeah. Gabriela, I think that your business is very emotional. And I feel like a lot of the times emotion sells. Um, so it, if you don't mind, I'm going to, I'm going to be picking your brains because I feel like you guys sort of already know the answers. So Gabriela, do you, do you use anything that puts your, uh, customers in all already in person? Um, uh, hi, yes, yes, I'm here. Uh, yes, we have a display and we, can explain to our customers what we do. And mm -hmm. after we explain to them, we kind of get the, you know, they, they start feeling emotional and they, we have samples also. Um, but I feel like sometimes it's kind of hard to uh, connect with a lot of people. Yeah. So uh, other than visual and emotion, what other thing would you suggest? Yeah. I'm glad that you said that. I'm very glad because, you know, um, sometimes you have to be mindful about that. Um, one, act, one customer, uh, I'm sorry, one small business owner that actually works with CLO, she did something amazing. Um, she does Dia de los Muertos. Um, and, and this is more just to kind of inspire you. Um, she does Dia de los Muertos uh, paintings, right? And um, it's paintings of little animals. 
So the emotion that she added is she did an ofrenda and she put her her sensory or her way of interacting with customers is, do you want to remember your love or your heaven pet? And they had put their names and then she kind of put it to the ofrenda. Um, so if you want to uh, do something like that, there's many ways that we, it, w- I'll tell you what, Gabriela, if you want to make an appointment, I'd be happy to explore <laughs> different ways because I think we can go in many different directions. Um, Gabriela, this is Candy. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. I'm sorry. Okay. I cut a little bit. Yeah. That's okay. Great. No worries. No, this is Candy. So I'm a participant and I would love to connect with you. I'm actually starting to like work with different affiliates. And I think that your, um, what you're doing would work really well with mama bear, um, company. Um, uh, I've actually lost a son and uh, my passion is to helping those that are, that's gone through loss. But not only that right now, I'm actually in the, I'm also a three time surrogate. So I work with intended parents that are going through, um, the IVF process and as a surrogate coordinator I've seen that a lot of the parents or the surrogates wanted to like create something very special um, so there's like customized bears that had like the the heart beat of the, the of the baby because sometimes intended parents aren't able to join so I would mm-hmm. love to collaborate with you and and see you know if it, you know because I can offer your service as part of a provider um, because right now I'm trying to do like a whole um concierge services, but to to focus more on the positive things of the IVF journey, yes. and not only the bad parts. You know, because if we just focus on the the sad part of what we're going through, it makes it harder, right? So yes, I would love if tough. if you want <laughs> if you want to give. I don't know if you want to put your phone number on the chat, or I can put mine. Um, yeah. and the same thing with the other person that was talking about the um the food. If you guys want to connect with me, because right now I'm actually working on that exactly, is having different options when intended parents come, um, special diets, stuff like that. I mean, so it's a whole, I, I want to co- uh, create a lot of community and help small businesses. So I can put my number in the chat. And if you feel that this, that you can offer um, also like cleaning services, nanny services, things like that, I want to create a whole um, portfolio of services for the intended parents when they're traveling from other countries. And they have no idea um, what's local or how they can get all this help. So that's my uh, that's what I'm working on right now on my business. So I can put my number and you guys are if you feel like you guys can reach out. Um, let me know, because right now I'm actually working on putting together all the referrals and stuff like that. OK. OK, thank you. Thank I you. just put my Instagram and my phone number. Thank you. OK, thank you. I'll reach out. Thank you, Candy. And Gabriella, thank you so much for, for your question. Um, I know we're over time. Um, Jessica, do you think we can take maybe two, three more questions? If that's yeah, okay? Yeah, that, that's fine. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so next, we have a question from Miley. Miley, I'm, are you still here um, so you can ask your question? Yes. Awesome. So, hi, I had a question on services. I know you went over on products and how to kind of display those. Um, But if you're providing services um, like cleaning services, say I kind of have some good ideas as far as like bring the senses to the table and stuff like that and visually and maybe some smells and stuff like that. But what kind of advice do you have if you're providing services and you don't have like products necessarily? Um, so for that, I believe I use the podcast as an example, right? And not necessarily having an item. Um, services have a big potential of also having tables. And I think that with you, uh, Miley, it would be more of um, having information available, letting your customers know what products you're using and how your products are better than uh, like you being a cleaning service. Like what is one of what is part of your pitch? Like, um, it, it, like it, why should I go with you? That kind of helps, like, uh, deliver your, have a better idea of your setup. Okay. Are you asking me, like, right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Um. okay, so, I, I, I mean, I guess, like, you know, I have really great customer service. I build really great relationships with the 
people I work with and I'm really, I think it's like personal because everybody has different needs. And so it's like customizable to different people. And then ob obviously, you know, being dependable and being, having good work ethic mm -hmm. um, and doing really good jobs. So. Okay. That's kind uh, of put on the table. Yeah. One of the, uh, one of the things that actually came in mind that one of the small business owners that I work with before um, she had, he had a winning, a winning, a window cleaning service. And he actually brought uh, two different, he had two different windows and he showed the before and after. And, and um, along with that, and I know that that's not your case. He actually had a cleaning, uh, a cleaning product that he was very proud of. Um, he would just say like, you know, I am going to clean your windows and even cleaning your windows, like the products that I use are very important. So he had the two windows of um, that he cleaned with the same product and he just showed how uh, specific products were making a difference. But on top of that, he was doing the the lever work for you. I hope that helps. And, and we can always make an appointment and we can brainstorm. I know that I'm literally putting you guys on the spot within seconds. Thank you. You're welcome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Miley. And we'll take two more questions. But we'll try to get through this quick. Um, with Thelma, she's asking, how would you display children's book on a book fair in a way that it will look more attractive? Her books are about money and finance for kids. And Thelma, if I missed anything, feel free to add to it. Yeah, tell, Thelma, I'm going to put you on the spot. Let's see. Tell me a little bit more about your business. Um, actually, it's not a business yet. I okay. Did, uh, I published uh, two books. Uh, and, the, and this one is in Portuguese. It's because I, I, I am Brazilian. So I I published in the United States. And then I um, published in Portuguese and Spanish as well. And uh, what happened is uh, the book, uh, I, I go to many um, uh too many like fairs but it's always it's it's hard to like to highlight your book but uh my business is not i what i think of is to uh, develop a program to teach parents how to uh talk about finance to their kids um in a daily basis not like lecturing for something because mm -hmm. um during the entire day you can um, add something related that's yeah cool. first of all I want to say congratulations on this amazing um, journey that you're heading into because one of the things that being a program manager I've noticed that money is some type of trauma for a lot of the uh the BIPOC community. So I love the approach that you're taking about not lecturing them because they're already kind of like, oh my God, like I don't even want to deal with anything with money. So um, I, for me, obviously, like, again, for everyone on here, um, I can't think of little things right in the spot because it, it does take brainstorming. But what I would say is uh, have I, I would even have like a scheduled time for them to be able to bring their kids and read a story to them, because that's something that I would love to take you, my five-year-old, for you to kind of like read a book to them and kind of see what it gives in. It gives an idea to the parent of what your book is, because here, here you go. You have a target market and a target a target segmentation. Your target market are obviously the kids because those are the ones that you want them to get the book, right? But your target segmentation are the parents. So they are as equally as important. So you want to be able, a, a, an example that I had previously given is Blippi, right? Blippi shows shapes, colors. Uh, those, I, Mr. Modern, Mr. Rogers, for those that don't know who Blippi is. He talks directly to the kids on YouTube, but over on Instagram, he talks to the parents like myself. Um, so you're educating both the kids and the parents. And I think that you have to find a way to be able to interact with both at the same time. Yes, uh, the, the my Instagram is always talking to the parents, uh, mm -hmm. giving them like tips and activities how to introduce this, like a uh, uh, 
on a plain basis, like uh, some um, activities that you can do with your kids uh, during uh, grocery mm -hmm. shopping or things like that. But mm -hmm. um, I don't know, like uh, when you are in a book uh, fair or things like that, you always think of books to entertainment. And mm -hmm. uh, because people have this financial, this money trauma, they just mm -hmm. uh, go, don't think about it and don't want to buy because they think they cannot teach if they are not doing things right. Mm -hmm. It's totally the opposite. You can all, like you can learn as you go and <laughs> since you are yeah. teaching it's, it's step by step. So it's hard. It's just because I have uh, three fairs for the Christmas and I just want to, I don't know. Yeah. So I see the fact that you said that you are at book fairs, that is already a huge thing, right? You now you're also, you're not just at a flea market. You're not just at a pop-up event. You are surrounded amongst competition. So at that point, we have to think even more outside the box to see how you can come across these other people. And I would love to set up an appointment with you and just, you know, think outside the box just looking at that little piggy, uh, it, like, I don't know if if there's a way that you can get little miniature piggies and actually have the little kids crack it or earn one. I don't know. There's so many different ways that you can go. Uh, but obviously, it takes time to kind of think outside the box. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. I would love Amazing. To. Thank you for your question. Um, this whole discussion was so engaging and insightful. Um, as much as I would want to take one more question, um, <laughs> I value your time and I know you have other things to do. Um, but if anyone would like to make an appointment with Jessica, feel free to do so. Um, and Jessica, I don't know if you would like to add your contact info on the chat. Um, and of course, we'll be sharing her contact info in the follow-up email. So keep an eye out for that. Um, before we conclude, a big thank you to our speaker, Jessica, for sharing valuable expertise and insights with us today. Um, your expertise has made this workshop truly amazing. Um, yeah, this was great. And as a reminder, this session recording will be shared with all the registered attendees via email. And it's in it also be uploaded to our YouTube if you need to um, look back at the video. So once again, thank you for your time and participation. Have a great evening. Thank you so much, Eric. And I'll be sending you this presentation as well. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Thank you, Thanks, Jessica. Guys. Thank you, Alex.